You can see it in his face. This guy knows what they've built right here. Scott Wu, CEO of Cognition AI, completely unknown company until today. This is not clickbait, guys. Today, March 12th, 2024. It is an insane breakthrough in artificial intelligence. So much better than ChatGPT, as they'll show you later in the metrics. Just watch, it's so freaking crazy. I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example Great of name Devin too. in action. I'm going to ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. API From now is on, not Devin easy, by is the way. in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. Great. ChatGPT had that. That's fine. After that, it builds a whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. That's not quite what ChatGPT had. Building a project with the same tools that software engineers have? Yeah, that's, that's new. Devin has its own command line. Own command line. Its own code editor. Its own code editor. That's what we use. And even its own browser. Even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation. So it has access to the browser and it knows what it should look up. That is the big distinguishing factor here. Of course, having it with the project and integrated in the environment is huge. But here, you know, LLMs and ChatGPT, technically ChatGPT had a plugin to go to the internet and started pulling stuff. It just wasn't useful. It wasn't interactive. It wasn't helping you. And it is, you're just better off doing it yourself. Here, integrated with everything, it's so crazy good. So that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Here, Devin runs into an unexpected error. It runs into an error. Watch. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print it statement. It decides to add a debugging print statement. Okay. Reruns the code with the debugging print statement and then uses the error in the logs to figure out how to fix the bug. So it sees that it has an error. It knows how to further diagnose that error, which is really not what ChatGPT was good at before. It really struggled with this, where if you had an error, it just tried to solve it directly. It's just like, you know, let's just try and figure this out. It's like, no, how would a human actually reason about this? They would probably print it out, try to get the full information, and it can do that all on its own. And it figures it out and solves the problem. Finally, Devin decides to build and deploy a website with full styling as the visualization. It built you a website. It didn't even just tell you, like, give you text like ChatGPT. It built you a website. You can see the website here. And there it is. It even looks good. All of this is possible today because Look of at the how happy he is. <laughs> both reasoning and long-term planning. Look at these metrics. It's a really hard problem. Oh my gosh. Like ChatGPT 3.5 or 3 here was, you know, ChatGPT 3 was probably like 0.4% or something. It was still really good. It was crazy at this stuff. GPT 4, I use it. I pay for it because I think it's really good. This stuff, you know, we've heard of it. To be honest, most of us don't really use it that much. It just never really became insanely mainstream, at least not as much as ChatGPT. This thing, Devin, oh boy, it, it will, it will, 14%. And we've only just started, but we're super excited about the progress that we've made so far. In the meantime, if you'd like <laughs> to try know, out man. Devin on your own real world tasks, send us a request below and we'd be happy to forward I'm it. I'm sending to them Devin. a request below. I'll let you know as soon as I have access to it. Bye guys.